This video is brought to you by CKGSB, China's only not-for-profit independent business school. You are considered by many people as the founding father of marketing science. So when you sort of started working on this subject, uh, I think marketing was not considered a science back then. No, uh, the, but e everything has fundamentals. That's right. And uh, they remain to be discovered yes. and utilized right. uh, in what is amount to engineering practices. But, but um, so, and if you go back toward the beginning, which I don't know, in, in the 60s, right, in the 60s, I worked on uh, media models, for example, and these are, uh, th there's certain kinds of data that exist, and you can build models which will use those, uh, but there are also judgments that have to be made. And one of the things that people had been reluctant to do was to call it a science when you were using judgments. So they consider well, science to be this hard, very precise mathematical process where there's no human judgment involved, or? That, well, uh, that's inappropriate in managerial that's <laughs> conditions yes. um, and in marketing conditions, uh, if, uh, usually. Um, um, and and therefore, I wrote some papers which use judgment. Mm -hmm. um, and as time has gone on, we have understood processes right. um, better and better and require less in some sense. But uh, models, in order for anybody to use them, and I have a paper called Managers and Models. Yeah, I'm aware of that <laughs> And um, they, for a manager to be willing to use something, it's got to be fairly simple. That's right. And it's got to c include the important elements right. as that he perceives in his problem. But not too complicated, such that you can still comprehend what's the essence. That's right. That's right. And um, so. People, uh, a, a lot of people like that idea. Uh, prior to that, you couldn't do any uh, marketing science or management science uh, without a very, very complete database that nobody had. Or, or they had a database and so they analyzed it, but it left out important things. That is the, the beginning of the time for marketing science in a That's sense right. where the firms didn't really know how to uh, use the technologies. Well, they didn't even have the technologies to do it That's in right. many ways. Right. And as we know that uh, after 40 years, now many firms, at, in the U.S. at least, have already adopted many tools for marketing, uh, uh, firm marketing science. That's right. Conjunct analysis, be it optimization, be it CRM tools, data analytics. So, and many of them are pro have already proved to be quite successful. Uh, actually, w uh, we want to get a little bit of historical pers perspective from you. That's right. uh, do you have some uh, examples say, in your memories about when this uh, adoption process first started? Well, I, I did an interesting uh, uh, with colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we we founded a, 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 a consulting company, mm -hmm. and the academics wanted to solve new problems and publish them. But they then hired MBAs uh, who would do the next, do the repeat in, in new situations in, in new companies. So the, so the methodology was developed? That's right. We, wanted, we, wanted, we were willing to do the methodology and see that it worked. And one of the interesting things uh, that, that I was involved in was building a marketing mix model mm -hmm. 
at uh, N- Nabisco, which was the, the National Biscuit, now owned by Kraft, but anyway, for Oreo cookies. Ah, Oreo cookies. And another one for Coca-Cola. So it's like a measurement slash optimization tool, in a sense. That's right. That's right. And perhaps uh, the most well-modeled uh, stuff, which uh, I, I'm not so much... Uh, have not been so much involved in, is um, uh, is new products because everybody um, so many new products fail, That's right. and um, and my colleague uh, Glenn Urban and uh, Al Silk um, uh, worked out a measurement process that you could take into a, a mall right. and. Um, get people to, to try the product and, right. and also to view potential advertising for the product. So these can be done before the product is launched and That's that right. can actually help the firms improve the and it, and it used to be that a product launch costs a million dollars and this process costs maybe 60000 right. So the payoff was It can help huge, you avoid huge. a huge mistake. That's right. And if you're going to kill it, kill it early. <laughs> That's always a better idea. Yeah, That's right. you mentioned that like companies like Nabisco and Coca Cola that actually adopted some of the uh, say marketing mix models That's that you developed. Right. That's right. Yeah. So uh-huh. did you see an impact after the companies made adoption decision? Well, interestingly enough, um, we we uh, had a built-in process of adaptation, mm-hmm. as you know, advertising effectiveness decreased uh, or increased, then you could shift the marketing mix and and that uh, and that that sort of thing is 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 very helpful in fact, you can do experimentation right with the model basically it's like counterfactual simulation before you actually carry it out in the real world that's correct, but you can also carry it out in the real world uh, essentially it can Continuing remeasurement because you introduce uh, different advertising copy. You, right. you uh, the market changes. You That's introduce right. different promotional right. techniques. Yeah, did some of these insights translate into their uh, actually managerial actions? So did Coca Cola change their advertising, say budget allocation after? Uh, Yes, actually, what what one discovers when one picks up and looks inside is that Coca Cola does not sell soft drinks. That's very true. They 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 sell syrup. And so the meaning attached to it. That's right, and um, so they're an interesting thing. They are are very seriously interested in advertising since since their bottlers um, do most of the physical work and distribution. And your company was the first time they actually quantified the effectiveness of their advertising. That's right. Okay. That's right. Anyway, it's grown from there. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, where I hit a, a, a jackpot early in the, uh, from a marketing science point of view was uh, uh, discovering with a, a, a student of mine, Peter Gudani, that the logit model, yeah. uh, multinomial logit model, it's was... One of the most uh, widely applied model in... Uh, that's right. Yeah. It was a r- remarkable... I mean, I've run millions of regressions, and, and they always look bad. <laughs> But but these models look really nice, <laughs> and and this payoff to, and there's ways that that can be used. For example, one of the thing the promotional techniques that's uh, frequently used in the United States is uh, sense off coupons, mm-hmm. which you sometimes get in the store, you sometimes get in the mail, um, and they, if you present them at checkout, why they entitle you to uh, some 
ten cents off or a dollar off, depends on the kind of product. And those we used the logit model mm -hmm. to predict predict ahead uh, to give a baseline uh, as if as if the coupon had not been dropped, right. but then it was dropped, right. and so you can see a bump right. and, a and a baseline. One of the uh, the things about knowledge is that your first few are your maximum discovery, and after that, they all seem to be they they are almost predictable to be in the same ballpark, and so people lose their interest and let, unless they have a fancy new idea, in which case uh, you can. Uh, have a new aha experience. But it is the major discovery that you mentioned that are really pushing the frontier of our knowledge in a way. That's right. Well, we organize knowledge a lot. That's right. It's one of the um, uh, major issues that, that has attracted a lot of attention in China nowadays is really uh, many of the managers were asking, can we really apply the marketing science tools that have been, some of them have been applied in the U.S. to our market and to actually benefit from this process, to make the whole process more efficient. And in a way, I'm not sure whether this is appropriate, but China today is a little bit like the United States in 30 years ago in terms of application of the marketing science tools. So I think many companies are asking the questions, can we really benefit from this? And I think having the examples that you've just given is, uh, is, a, very, uh, is a good news for us and for the companies that there's a lot of room for improvement, even uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Chinese market of, uh, yeah. of today. And you, you have to have um, somebody do the work who has the skills to do it. Now, you, uh, we've, we found that um, that Many of our students, and again, we had mostly MIT people, but um, also a, a, a sizable number from Wharton, uh -huh. who understand what we were doing, right. could translate it. That's very interesting. That's right. That's and you've got to translate it. Right. And, uh, so in a way, the MBA students are really like the bridge between the academia and the practitioners. That's and they're right. very instrumental in... Uh, Exactly, exactly. And we, and we turned out a lot. And um, the, if you think about the process of building a model or doing a, a project like this, first of all, you have to have entry into the company. That's right. And you like to get to a pretty high level because you need, frequently need a champion because it's not going to be done immediately. And it's going to cost some money, so you go you go in and you you go in with priors, usually a, a, a feeling, a, a hypothesis about what you might do, and then you do a lot of update of that because you you get the manager to articulate the problem, right. you go and you talk to other people. That's right. um, then you uh, may come up with uh, a, a, a model of some kind, but then you need data and you need to test the model and, and, and be, sure, be sure that you're doing it. And then one of, one of my colleagues says that you should ask, ask the manager or discuss with the manager how you're going to, how he and you are going to evaluate the results. I see. What is a success? You evaluate, okay, success, you mean both for the company and in terms of knowledge creation. That's right, that's right. Well, uh, the, the, that's, the company is not too worried about that, <laughs> which is okay. Um, and I always say, if, if the companies have very complicated objectives sometimes, but I usually say, 
if you can increase their profits, they can figure out what to do with them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, um, but, but then you go on and you have to, um, uh, you, you, you learn by trying to fit the model to the data that the model is wrong, the data is probably right. right. It's a very turbid process. Or you, mean, process you, or you mean, may need different kind of data. And, and it's a cyclic process Absolutely. until you finally yeah. Uh, yeah. get, get well, the product.